Hello everyone and welcome back. This is going to be the very last video in this entire class and I'm just going to go over the final project. I want to talk about the rubric and kind of show you exactly what I am expecting. I designed this rubric very similarly to the front end capstone so you should be somewhat familiar with the format but I'm going to go over it real quick to make sure. For this project you're going to create a full stack web application loosely based on Yelp which we have been doing together for the past several weeks. Um, your website will focus on a category of your choice. We're going to be building this over several weeks of class. It should incorporate front-end best practices such as responsive design, attractive colors, and spacing, much like the front-end capstone project, only better. In addition, you'll be creating all the back-end logic to add functionality. It should follow RESTful routing conventions. That said, you have a lot more creative freedom with this project and should incorporate some custom functionality. So, let's look at our user stories and see if our application that we've already built meets these. I can access an index page that shows all the items in one place. Yup. Yup, sure can. Right here. I can click on various categories to see an index of only the items in those categories. Yup. Let's see what category did this person do. It is action. So let's go to genres and go to action. And that's the only one that shows up. And what is this fake one? It's a slice of life. So if I click on slice of life, only that one shows up. I click on an individual item to see more information about it. Click right there more information I can create a user account and log into the application with the username and password I can sure do that test test now I can log in perfect I can create new items using an HTML form add comic and I would just fill this out to complete the form I can modify and delete only items that I created so if I come in here to this comic I cannot delete it because I don't own it but if I come in here to this one I can edit and delete it. I can add comments to an item which are linked to my user account. So I can come in here to this comic that I did not create, but I can add a comic. Awesome! Thanks for sharing. And there it is. I can modify and delete my comments. You can see here that I can, but I cannot modify this other person's. I can rate items only once each, which we've already demonstrated many times right there. If I click one plus again, it still doesn't do anything. I can access the website equally well on a mobile device and desktop browser. Let's go back to the index page just to show that and pull up my console and click on the little button over here, toggle, toggle device toolbar, and you can see what that looks like on different devices. You can see that it is indeed responsive. Same is true if I just make it smaller like this. You can see that it's got different breakpoints that it works on. If I click on this one and I make it smaller, we can see here that it does indeed do that. Now I'm not expecting perfection on any of this, especially the responsive part. So you'll see here this is not perfect. This is this has got gaps in here, got breaks. I'm not expecting perfection by any means, but I want it to be responsive and usable on different devices. Design requirements. You gotta use Node.js with Express. You gotta use MongoDB Atlas and you gotta use Mongoose for accessing it. You have to use Passport and you have to use Heroku. All these things we already did together. This should not be a problem at all. Create some sort of custom functionality. Um, run your ideas by me first if you have not already done so. Most of you should have already done so by now. I'm making this video end of October and only a couple people have, but by the time you're actually watching this, most everybody should have. An example might be, I've already talked about this several times, but the ability for users to create a library of comics that they've already read and maybe what they want to read. This is going to be different for each website. Make sure you add comments to your code in order to make it easy to read and understand. So inside of my code, if I pull up, I don't know, my, my app.js, you can see that I have a lot of comments. I have the config import, I have route imports, model imports, different comments just kind of separating and making it easy to understand. Now these are suggestions, not requirements. Build a website that you wish existed. Use a CSS framework. Bootstrap is the one that I demonstrated, but there are many more. Materialize, Bulma, there's a bunch more um, that you could use if you so desire. Um, I highly recommend that just because it makes your life easier, especially as, as regards responsive design. I highly recommend you follow the directory structure I demonstrate, such as models and public and views and partials and all that kind of stuff. You don't have to most of the time, um, but it just makes your life easier if you do. So let's look at the rubric real quick and grade this one that we made. So the HTML is well structured, easy to read, including proper indentation. There are no extra or elements or tag orphans. If I look inside of here at all of these EJS, let's just look here, you can see that the indentation is followed, um, so on and so forth. Look at the comics show. 
indentation, lots of indentation. I'm sure some of you have noticed there's not really any comments inside of my EJS. The reason for this is because this is pretty straightforward. If you know HTML, you know what all of these things do, and you don't necessarily need any comments. But if I had any strange HTML or any weird things going on, I would need comments to talk about what those are. So right here, this one would get four points. CSS, well-structured, organized, and concise. Let's look at our CSS. We only have one, styles.css, and there's only a few things on there, um, and all of them are very straightforward. And I have a comment in here to show, hey, this is for the show underscore comics page. All the rest of these are just applied to um, the index page. So this is very, very small, very concise, very well organized. JavaScript is well written, follows best practice. So we've got indentation, we've got functions, arrow functions. So let's look at so let's look at our front end JavaScript because remember this is just the front end. On our JS, we just have this one file. And I've got good comments separating everything out. I have um, got all my elements selected in one place, got all my helper functions in one place. They're all using arrow functions. I've got the event listeners in one place. Those are not using arrow functions, which is exactly as it's supposed to be, because for your event listeners, you don't want arrow functions. So this would get a four as well. Code is very dry, easily readable. I'm not repeating myself at all in here. Responsive design, all pages are responsive. We just talked about that, so there's that. And then on the back end, back end JS, very well written, following best practice, some functions, arrow functions, so on and so forth. And we can look at the back end stuff. So let's look, just look at our comics routes just for an. I'm going to look at all of your stuff, but I'm just going quickly through this video. You can see the indentation is followed. You can see I am using arrow functions. So there's no. Um, repetition of code here. I've got comments put in there to help things keep things organized, so on and so forth. So my backend JS is dry, easily readable. My EJS is used to template all the websites. The templates are well written, following best practices. Notice that if you get your HTML points, you're going to get your EJS points and vice versa because they're pretty much the same thing. MongoDB Atlas, all the data is stored in an atlas. All database operations are included. CRUD is create, read, update, and destroy, or delete if you like, but destroy is the classic way. Uh, models are well designed, so if you do want it, you just look through your models, find all of them, and make sure they meet your needs, make sure they do what they're supposed to do without anything extra. It uses Passport JS, we do. Private information is not accessible by unauthorized users. It is, because if I go in here and try and log out, and I try to get in here, I can't get any. I can't ed edit anything or delete anything. Passwords are hashed prior to being stored in the database. Passport does that for us unless you specifically turn it off, and it's actually very hard to turn off, so you should be able to get this very easily. Other user stories. All user stories are met. We went over those at the beginning. They were all met. Custom functionality. I did not implement any custom functionality, so I would not get points. RESTful routing. It follows RESTful routing convention. And then finally, the website is ho is hosted on Heroku, and it's accessible via the internet. So if we look down here at the bottom of the conversion chart, I got all of the points except for these. So I would have lost one, two, three points. That's 286 out of 300. 3286 divided by 300 means I would get a 95 for this project. If you have any questions about any of this, please let me know as soon as possible. As the end of the semester rolls around, things get a little hectic, things get a little crazy, and I want to make sure that you are well informed and able to make good decisions about this. I look forward to seeing the awesome stuff that y'all make, and just let me know if you have questions. Thanks. Thanks.